Hey guys, Nick here, KI5KZ. I want to make a quick video of an issue I was having with the uh, MFJ CW Kia reader. So I, um, hold on one second. Get off that. All right. So, um, one issue that I was having after I set this whole thing up, and I'll post a link in the description of another YouTube video that, uh, shows you how to hook the ICOM 7300 up to the MFJ 464. But an issue that I was having, guys, was this was happening whenever I put it in CW mode. So no matter what frequency I was on, no matter what band, whatever, it was just constantly beeping like this and it was going crazy. So I was, after about listening for that, listening to that for about 10 minutes, I was about ready to chunk this thing out in the yard and stomp it. <laughs> but anyway, I figured out what the issue was. So after I poked around in the menu and played with some of these knobs on this thing, I, um, I couldn't figure it out, but I started messing around in the ICOM settings and um, I learned what my issue was. So I'm using just a MFJ553 uh, straight key, $30, nothing to it. Um, and I'm also brand new to CW for anybody that might be a veteran that's watching this. So Y'all go easy on me in the com you know, in the comments. But I bought this thing just to kind of learn CW. Anyway, this was my issue. So if we go to CW mode, you know, that thing's going crazy like I said it was. We go to menu. You need to make sure that your keyer is set on the appropriate selection for what type of key you have. So if I go look at that, I hit, okay, I'll go back. Hold on. Um, if I go to the menu button, I hit keyer. And I go to edit set. And then I go to CW key set. And then if I uh, make sure that you scroll down to the second menu section, your key type. See how that's set on paddle? Well, I don't have a paddle key. I have a straight key. Now, you just need to make sure that your key is set to the appropriate key type. You know, whichever one you have, I have a straight key. Once that happens, all that craziness stops. Okay. Then if we go back, let's see if I can find one. So now I'm in CW mode. And let me tell y'all, um, I was going to try to find a station that wasn't the W1AW station, but um, I'm still learning how this thing works. So I'm just going to scroll to the W1AW because it decodes very well with this thing. So if I scroll on down here to the W1AW. See, I just saw it a second ago. I was just on it. Maybe they quit sending. Maybe I can get on somebody else. Nope, I was just down a little bit too far. Alright, that's just the way I got the filter set up, guys. Alright, so one thing that I want to show y'all, now that I have that straight key stuff set in my menus, this thing is now um, decoding. Alright. Now this is again the W1AW station, which is super easy to, to decode because it's a, a, you know, it's very crystal clear signals getting sent out and stuff like that. But um, I do want to point out that at least with the ICOM 7300, this thing is super finicky with the volume knobs and the squelch knobs. So you have to make sure that your noise floor is almost absolutely zero. Another thing that you want to focus on is your volume knob on your radio. So, in my opinion, I think you need to set these and then leave them alone, don't touch them. And then just adjust the volume or squelch knob from your radio. Because if I just barely adjust this thing too high... Oh, hold on, wait. Maybe too low. See, it, start, it stops picking it up. Now, since... That's a strong signal it was still picking up when I cut it up really high. But most signals, if you kind of even barely move that adjustment knob, it'll like mess up the decoder. Um, so again, I just wanted to point that out, guys. That's something that I was having an issue with. So maybe I can help somebody with that. So again, this is my first YouTube video. I don't know. Um, Y'all give me some tips if you want to. I don't care. 
Regardless, um, I hope that this might have helped somebody that is looking to buy one of these. Um, like I said, I'm just not getting into CW, so I don't know nothing about sending it yet. Um, I'm trying to listen to it and learn it that way. But if y'all have any suggestions on that, I'm all ears. Um, again, the, this 40 meter band light, it's kind of noisy like always. So I was, you know, I, earlier I was getting a few people on 20 meters to decode pretty well on this. When the sun was shining, but um, now I'm having issues. So that's why I tuned the W1AW. Y'all stay tuned. Later, I'll try to catch the 20 meter band open during the day and see if I can... Um, decode somebody sending some Morse code um, with the MFJ 464 on, on 20 meters. Anyway, I hope that that problem may have helped somebody. If not, um, if you're just here to kind of watch this thing decode, if you tune into a nice strong signal, guys, this thing will automatically adjust to the word speed. Um, I'm not sure. I think I think that's telling me that it's sending at 25, 24 words a minute right now. I'm still new to this thing. I'm not real sure. Um, but it does well, fairly well, whenever you have that strong signal, like I was saying. Um, but if you're trying to turn into a weak station, or if you're trying to decode somebody that's not as, um, uniform with their CW, it, it might not work as well. Now, as far as contesting goes, I, you know, I don't know. I hear this is a great rig for it, but anyway, appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, again, my name is Nick, call sign KI5KZ, look me up if you want to. Oh, if not, whatever. If you want, um, post a comment below, maybe I can show y'all some other things that I have in my station. I don't know. If not, I hope this helps somebody. Uh, I'm gonna say 73 to y'all, uh, KI5KZ, out.